I want to open up first with a, a quick personal story. Um, and I am privileged uh, occasionally to be able to work remotely from home. And in doing so, I get to take my son to and from school. And um, I cherish those moments because I, I recall this one morning, I was driving him to school and it was a sunny day and he was, he was gazing out the back window and he quietly turns his head and he was then three years old at the time. He turns his head towards me and says, look daddy, the sun is playing peekaboo. And my natural instinct was to actually correct him and say, no son, that's not how it works and this is what happens and so forth. But um, for some reason, that one moment, I, I paused and I hesitated. And I, I said, let him marinate in that sort of pure innocence of thinking and that pure perspective. But afterwards, it got me thinking even further. As an innovator in the industry, I was wondering if I was constrained by my thinking and what are the ways to essentially branch out and seek the perspectives of some of the best innovators out there. And so I went on a journey to really try to figure out and uncover what was in some of the leading innovators' heads and what were they doing differently that we can essentially learn from. Um, what I did realize along the way is that most of what we do in healthcare tends to fall within the usual realm, right? We innovate within the constructs of the things that we can see and we fail to sort of look on the fringes. We fail to sort of look at sort of the crazy things that are happening out there and the techniques that people are using. Um, and so what I noticed was that there were some commonalities in terms of some unusualness and how these innovators were going about um, developing their products and services and their solutions for their, for their audiences. Um, but before we get into all that stuff, I want to take a little bit of a step backward, define the challenge ahead, um, and uh, talk about how we got into this crisis, at least one element of the crisis, and uh, how do we get unstuck from there. Um, this is actually, uh, for those of you who have not heard of Ivan Illich, he was actually a controversial author and philosopher who wrote a book in the late 70s and 80s called Medical Nemesis, Limits of Medicine. Phenomenal book if you haven't read it. Um, and he challenged a lot of our preconceptions to healthcare, what we know it to today. And he made this statement back then. It says, modern medicine is a negation of health. It isn't organized to serve human health, but only itself as an institution. It makes more people sick then it heals. That was said back in the late 70s. And quite frankly, that still holds true today. So not much has really changed over the past few decades, right? I mean, how do we get out of this rut that we're in this global health crisis? To some degree, you can think about it as the equivalent of the financial crisis that we saw episodically, of course, that, you know, that hit heavily in the United States. But it's not just too big to fail, it's too important to ignore. This is actually, so a colleague of mine actually wanted to dig a little bit deeper and, and find out what are the leading causes of morbidity and mortality in this country. And not surprisingly, of course, lung cancer, cardiac conditions, and so forth came to the top. But more often than not, iatrogenic causes, things that we were doing ourselves to, the, to, to our healthcare system, was in the top five to 10. And when you quickly look at the, the literature that's out there and you add in unnecessary medical procedures and the complications that arise from those, it quickly becomes the leading cause, and it's, I know it's a busy slide, but towards the right here, the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the United States. Now, I know this is US-centric in data and information, but it has global implications in terms of how we think about healthcare. For those of you who are more visual, that's the equivalent of up to seven jumbo jets crashing per day. And we don't allow that to happen in other industries, but in healthcare, somehow, it slips and it gets by. And it's not that we don't, you know, that we've got dumb people on the job. We've got very smart people. We've got experts, you know, leading our healthcare systems, our hospitals, our, our, our payer networks, our insurance companies, our, our, our pharmaceutical companies. So why are we still in this crisis? Why can't we, you know, transform ourselves out of it? And that really got me thinking. Um, to some degree, though, it's not really surprising that healthcare is, is sort of in this rut because it was never designed from the bottom up. It just sort of happened over, over the course of years. And I know this is a cliched quote, but I feel like it's very relevant in today's world and thinking and how we think about innovation. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And that is indeed what is happening today. We're building a lot of products, building a lot of services for problems that existed years ago. It's a century old practice of medicine, over a century old practice of medicine. And we still assume that we need to innovate within that old, old construct of how we practice medicine. This is an image from Lifetime's, uh, Life Magazine's uh, Country Doctor that was done in the 1940s where they tracked a doctor over the course of the day and took some, some, some pictures. And that was 
I mean, this is still how medicine is practiced today, right? It's a physician patient. You see them in a facility or a clinic or a hospital and, and you intervene and, and, and treat and diagnose. Um, and our best thinking today and how we come up with products and services is this. We just drop, we think that there's a problem, we drop a piece of technology or service into the existing experience of our current environment without thinking about what the environment should be. And this keeps us in a crisis because it, and we wonder why we just have sort of the usual and the pushbacks and the lack of engagement. If you go to a number of different conferences and events, everyone's talking about why aren't people engaging with my stuff? We, we solved their problem with our product. So I like to think about innovation in, in sort of three waves um, of, uh, of development. The first was foundational. Back in the 60s and 70s, we had the infrastructure laid out in front of us, the broadband, internet, storage, speed. And then for a series of decades, and you can argue that we're still sort of in this, in this, in this phase, is the incremental innovation started to prop up. And those, these, are the, these are the apps, the software programs, the devices, the wearables, everything that we're seeing today built on top of that infrastructure that was provided to us. But we can't seem to get out of this. And in order for us to sort of get ourselves into a different construct of healthcare, we need to reimagine the experience of healthcare and not try to innovate within the old paradigm of healthcare. And we see this happening uh, very specifically and oftentimes look outside of healthcare for a lot of inspiration. We see it happening at education. We see it happening in transportation, retail. The way we consume music today is clearly not the way it was five, 10 years ago. They've transformed the experience. We haven't yet done that in healthcare. Part of the challenge is the fact that we're sort of stuck with our old kind of textbook way of thinking about how do we create innovations and how do we solve, solve problems. So this is sort of the classic Clay Christensen jobs to be done, you know, find a problem and then build a product or a service to essentially solve that problem. And that's important, but it's not enough to transform an environment and an industry. And the classic example I like to talk about in the, in the 20th century as far as, far as product solving problems, electronic health records. There's probably some technologists in the early 90s who went to a physician and said, you know, if I could archive all of your patient records and deliver to you in electronic format and then serve it up so that you can search it and access the historical records of your patient, would that be useful to you? I bet not a single physician said it would not be useful. They all said, yeah, great, fantastic, go build it. So the, the, the techie goes out, raises five, 10, 20 million bucks, builds out a technology, brings it back to the doc and says, here it is. You asked for it, we built it, use it. Not a single doctor used an EHR for decades. Right? And the problem was not that it didn't solve a problem, the problem it wasn't designed for the experience of the individual. And so it's not just important to solve problems, but it's important to redesign the experience around the people using the products that we're creating and the services that we're creating. So this is one of my favorite um, stories that I think exemplifies uh, and summarizes the challenge we have in healthcare. And this is about a burrito. And I hope nobody gets offended by profanity um, in here, but I'm just gonna read some of this. So this is a guy who wrote a blog post. He was really pissed off and he went about the person who made his burrito in, in, in whatever store he went to. Said, Has anyone not had a burrito? Okay, so everyone's had a burrito. So everyone could probably relate to this. So have you ever had a burrito where they sort of just drop things in a row? and then you take a bite of it. So this guy got really pissed off and he decided to write a blog post directly to the person who created his burrito. And he, he calls this burrito abomination. And I just wanna read um, a paragraph of this. So it says, burritos are eaten from one end to the other. So that means when you assemble a burrito with a motherfucking zones of ingredients going that direction, you create a disgusting experience for the burrito's end user. When you make a burrito, you should put the ingredients in layers lengthwise. That way, every bite has at least a fucking chance of getting at least two types of ingredients, and there's little chance of becoming almost hopelessly trapped in a goddamn cilantro cavern. <laughs> this is healthcare, right? We have all of our product, we have all of the ingredients to make an amazing healthcare system but we haven't reimagined and built it in an experience that's consumable. 
And I think this is the best example that uh, I think summarizes our, our crisis.